The public hasn't got a clue what architecture is. Not a clue. We, we work in this, uh, we could be very obscure, um, um, modern classical musicians or poets. And, and, and yet we're the most connected to, to society of all the arts, right? We build in the city, we build under pragmatic terms, we work with developers, we work with economic situations, on and on. And with planning boards and blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's amazing that, um, especially in this country, I have to say very different than Japan and Europe, that there's um, kind of an ignorance, kind of a complete lack of what our architecture is. And yet, everyone does their compulsory European trip to look at the beauty of Europe. And I always wonder, what the hell do they come back with? They're looking at Europe and you think, don't they get it? Right? They're, they're interested in the culture of the city and they're interested in architecture as it participates. I think actually that, that certain buildings are, have very short time frameworks. It's just, I'm not sure it's a good or bad thing. It's just a thing. It just is. And it reflects the dynamicism of our cities. Um, and there, you can anticipate they probably won't be libraries or city halls or institutions like this one because they, there's an investment and there's, a, there's already a, an establishment of a certain permanence that comes with the institution. But well, think of the opposite. A town that has no new structure or no revitalization, you're looking at a kind of a dead town. And I would think it's much less about looking at the architecture as something in design and looking at a broader issue of the um, kind of the livelihood and the energy of the city. And that represents something extremely powerful. It's the way um, New York right now is undergoing, it's suffering under the current economy. But what I'm amazed by, I live around the corner, I live on Mercer. And um, I, I, I go back and forth between LA and, and New York and, and I'm gone for a month and I come back and three shops are closed. And I'm going, oh dear. Well, it's, it's a tough time. And then I come back the next time and there's three new shops. And I'm going, God, this is amazing. I just talked to my wife about this last night. And I stared in the window of these two new shops and there was a big opening last night in and, and the fashion shop and there were all these uh, two meter girls hanging out. And I was going, what's going on? And um, uh, it's this new shop that opened up and I'm going, God, what an, it's amazing how resilient our society is. And that resiliency includes its architecture. It's resilient in terms of the society. It's resilient economically, right? And um, that's a really good thing, right? That people can, that resiliency means that we can, um, we can solve problems and we can come up with other solutions and uh, it represents an incredibly complicated organism, right? That's so multifaceted that it, it can keep regenerating itself. And um, again, that commercial or cultural regeneration is paralleled by architectural regeneration. Make sense? And who cares if a building lasts 10 years? In fact, in some ways, it'd be kind of interesting if, what if 10% of New York was only existed for three years and then it'd be something new? God, it'd actually be, um, it'd be the image of, of Archigram, if this is what they really anticipated. And um, every time you came to New York, there'd be like new things showing up as buildings. Um, I don't know, it'd be, it'd be fantastic, I think, right? The city would be constantly, you could never understand it, never know it. Um, it'd be constantly redefining itself. And um, it'd be the essence of a really vital cosmopolitan place. You should be held accountable. Um, I guess the answer has to be yes, doesn't it? Uh, but I think it's a bit more complicated than that the architect is responsible for this. Um, architects um, are beholden to clients that um, allow you to manage a project. And um, believe it or not, aren't the, uh, the power behind the, the criterion by which buildings are built, whether it's programmatic or whether it's performance and performance in terms of energy. And so that, um, we're looking at a collaborative effort between, um, I guess you would have to include um, governmental agencies and an agreement in society of uh, how buildings have to behave and what that normative behavior is in terms of um, this issue, right? And it would have to do with the, um, the promotion of that and the acceptance of that by a client and finally, um, the architect, really the third party, um, 
because again, it doesn't matter whether you're interested or whether it's a, a, a serious value in, in your work or not, it still requires an agreement of, of, of client. Um, so it's going to be finally a collaboration of, again, the architect's going to step in and we're going to be responsible now in, in um, manifesting that desire. Of course, you know that we're at a time that it seems to be maybe the first time in this country that there's been a radical shift in how we think about energy. Because this is a country that's rich in energy and could, um, could be wasteful because of the uh, vastness of our resources, right? And um, so we didn't have to concern ourselves with that. And it wasn't really a, a serious issue until, it wasn't even made aware of a serious issue until maybe the 60s. Um, and um, in terms of its broad global effects, right? And um, so this is something new and it's, um, I'm quite really hopeful that it seems to be that the public is now quite enmeshed in this issue. That's the thing. There needs to be more conversation that's accessible to the common public that really um, allows them to understand architecture as something much more complicated that is a result of this type of thinking about these numbers of forces. So you look at this building and go, oh, really tough and uh, maybe to my eyes ugly because it's made out of, it's brutal. And I'm gonna go, well, actually the concrete is construction concrete and it's because of the cost model. Um, would it be appropriate to spend twice the amount of money? Probably not. An educational facility that, that has free tuition, et cetera. And, and so I'm gonna go, well, maybe you can understand the building more if you realize the building is a reflection of economic forces that are connected to cultural forces where do you really wanna build seagums in the site? That, well, seagums building might not be appropriate. It represented a whiskey company um, and represented a, the, 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 what the essence of corporate America when it was built. And, um, well, you can still argue whether that's appropriate or not, but that's a subject of conversation. But the first thing you'd want to do is start looking at architecture and see it as a reflection of the forces that make it. And it's not all the architect. Everybody goes Tom Main or Morphosis, etc. And I think it's much more complicated than that. We're translating the forces. And again, it goes back to other conversations we had. You'd look at the, the client group and the institution in this case. You'd look at the nature of the, the economics at a particular time. You'd look at, at the technology available to you, et cetera, et cetera, right? Somehow we need more of that conversation so that you see differently, right? If you looked at the lunar landing module, is that a beautiful thing or an ugly thing, right? If you really admire what it did, insane, one time, 250,000 miles one way, 250,000 miles back, you probably admire it and you might even affect you in thinking it's interesting. Maybe not beautiful, maybe beautiful. But the point would be, you admire it, you find it interesting, you find it beautiful because you um, understand it in context to some greater goal. Make sense? There's a whole new architecture emerging out of this generation, and um, which I think is evident today, which is absolutely different the way I was trained in architects. And um, I suspect I'm seeing in universities projects of um, greater urban scope and infrastructural scope, people working on um, waste management facilities and broad urban projects having to do with infrastructure, transportation, uh, a, a movement of people, city edges. Um, maybe something more direct connected to direct political engagement, cultural, social engagement, and um, also thought kind of through real politic, and quite serious in terms of the reality and an engagement with reality is my sense as I see certain things kind of taking place right now.